Hello lovely Leo, it's February 2023 and we're doing your love and general reading. I'm Gemstone Tarot and this is for you if you're Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising or Venus, okay? I am going to take a couple of cards first of all, just so we can have a sniff around at what energy you're bringing into the month or what energy is in play, like an overall energy signifier card. Oh, okay. Let's see, what do you need to know? Not bad. Okay. First card I get for you is the Four of Cups. Four of Cups is it's many things. Sometimes the Four of Cups can come when we're just oh, just pissed off with life, you know, that whole, you can see it from there. And the kind of implication with the Four of Cups and the Rider Waite one has this like cosmic hand offering you a cup and you're just like, I'm good, thanks. It's I'm good, thanks. You know, I'm not very inspired. I'm not really feeling it today. I'm not really feeling it this week. So, I mean, God, you know, it's been January and before that it was December and before that it was November. I think what I'm trying to say is winter is not Leo's favourite time normally. Um, you're ruled by the sun and you, you, you kind of need it. So they're just saying that. Um, also for some of you though, the Four of Cups can come when you're under a lot of pressure and you're under a lot of stress and you have to move into what I call emotional neutral where instead of like imploding, exploding or anything like that, you just kind of downshift and think, I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to say anything, I'm not going to do anything, I'm just going to kind of zero out, you know, be in neutral. That is a really good thing to do sometimes when you're overwhelmed. I mean, and some people call it shutting down. I don't. I call it just having a breather and taking a bit of space, okay? So I think you've found, and for some of you, this may be to do with a Pisces Cancer or a, Scor a Scorpio person, a water sign, um, or to do with relationships, because obviously the, the cup cards represent the feelings and the relationships. So for some of you, you may not be sure, or you may not have been feeling it recently, or you may just be in a hiatus in a relationship with somebody where you don't really quite know where it's going. Then, thank God, you get the Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is a card you get when your luck is about to turn. And it doesn't always necessarily mean straightforwardly you know, you had bad luck, now you get good luck, because life doesn't really work in that much of a binary way. So what it does mean though, is things are changing. There's a turn in the luck, and that's good for you, and it's a breath, and it's also major arcana, and what I call on my daily channel, it's a woof of energy. It feels like a rocket, a rocket fuel coming in. This is good, I like this. Um, you may not get to choose how it happens, you may not get to choose when it happens, but who cares, because it's happening and that's a good sign for you, okay? So let's take a couple more cards as well, looking at February. So that's the energies that are at play, that's what you're coming in with. You know, if you were checking in baggage, that would be your baggage. Make sure you put an air tag in it been listening on TikTok to that woman who stuck an air tag in her, in her luggage and then saw it go to all kinds of different places. <laughs> I think my luggage went to Starbucks today. My luggage went back to someone's house today. Okay, just adjust this. Nice, more major arcana. one is for you. Okay, got three cards here. God. Also got a zip in my back, as the actress said to the bishop. Right, let's look at the majors first. First off, we've got temperance. So you could be dealing with a Sagittarius person or some of you, there's a little birdie singing on the roof, some of you have got Sagittarius in your chart but also, when you get temperance, there's always, you can see here, there's two kind of balls of chi, and normally you get a woman who's got two water jugs and she's like pouring from one to the other and 
there's a feeling that you're kind of doing what I call folk lady dancing and you're exchanging energy between one thing and another. Okay, and it's a kind of energy that is, it's a way of taking what's being thrown at you and making something of it. And you might feel like you want to have more control over things than this. But I think in early February in particular, having control would be an illusion. There's something about a situation that you're in, and I can't put my finger on it at the moment, and I will dig down into it, that is a bit mystical and a bit unknown and a bit below the surface. Because alongside temperance, you get this magnificent card, the moon. Nice. Now, I tell you what I do know, actually. One moment. She said. Okay. I think there's a full moon in your sign, isn't there, of Leo? Yeah. Now then. Okay, so the 5th of February... I know that's January. No, sorry. Oh, is there one in Aquarius though? Because that's your opposite sign. Hang on. Hang on. No, it's not. No, it's February. Oh my God. Do you know what? I'm making these when we're still in the kind of shadow of Mercury retrograde and it's just the pits. Okay. Full moon in Leo. I think I'll find that's February. Right. Hmm. This is good for you. You see that wheel of fortune that you've got over there? And you know your stagnant, 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 your stagnant situation. There's a push. There's a push to move it forward and there's a push. If you think about the balls of chi here, and this is gonna be a bit weird, so I'm just gonna say, and you think about those in terms of circles, and this one, if you think that she pushed that from the bottom like she gave birth to the moon, told you it was going to be weird, Leo. Them's the cards. Something is like pushed into knowing. And things that are pushed into knowing come in a few different ways. One, it can be secrets that people are keeping from you, that there is an aspect to the situation that's making it stagnate that you don't know about. And for a few of you, more than a few of you, I think that's a thing. You don't know about it and you sense it and now you get to actually see it and find out about it. Until now, it's been under the surface, especially if you're dealing with a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or especially if you have Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio in your chart like rising, Venus, moon signs in particular, my God. Also, and this has been coming up for Leo for a while, pay attention, Leo. Um, if you've got any notion of starting your own business, becoming a healer, doing anything esoteric where, you know, like with Neville Goddard and manifesting and everything as you pushed out, this month, everything is you pushed out. And that's you pushing that moon out. Yes, that is you. So everything on a subconscious level that you, no pressure, that you think is going to actually manifest in your life. So that doesn't mean, and this is why you get this temperance card as well. Whenever we hear that, there's always an anxiety where you like, don't think bad thoughts, don't think bad thoughts, just think good th thoughts, think rich, think I have love, think this, think that. Ooh, I'm thinking bad thoughts. It goes like that into a cycle. This is about literally doing that, where you allow the negativity, remember the four of cups with the neutral and the folk lady dancing? Yep. So here we are, folk lady, she's at the front of the pub and her favourite folk band has come on and this is you now, follow the narrative, you are letting the kind of negative energy do this and you're kind of processing it and pushing out what you want, the good, pushing forward. It's weird, yes, but what you are getting as downloads and awakenings, and this is channeled for you, Leo, 
Whatever you push out is magic this month. Magic, magic, magic. So whatever words you say, let's say you did, I don't know, I'm just going to really pluck something out of the air. Let's say you scheduled a class on astral travel or you scheduled a class on astrology or Reiki or whatever it is, your inner knowledge is going to absolutely radiate out to the people who join your class and it's going to be popular and they're going to like it. So if you have any kind of vlog, blog, snog, whatever you want to call it, do it, start it. If you haven't started, and I always say this to everybody and I will do something about this and make a video on it at some point, um, just switch the camera on. If you don't know what to say, let's say you want to start a YouTube channel, you want to do a TikTok or an Instagram, okay? Um, get your phone, look, I mean, you, all you need is a backdrop of nothing. Get your phone, start talking. If it's shit, just don't, you just delete it. Do another one, but do another one, do another one, do another one, okay? Let's look at romance as well. I'm just going to look at this first. Hang on there because I feel like for some of you this is love life. And by the way, if this does turn out to really be your story, it really resonates with you, there will be an extended reading. That link will be below in the description box, but see how you feel, see how you get on. Okay, we have, can you, no, can you notice here? I'm very bossy actually, I'm not normally like this Leo, it must just be for you. Can you notice here, eight of pentacles, that we have the moon face over the top. So it's a big deal. The moon is a big deal for you this month. Even, and again, Eight of Pentacles, Sun in Virgo is the work card. So as you can see, she's in the office and all the rest of it. There's something here about transforming workspace. So either changing jobs, changing your workspace, changing your work pattern, changing how you feel about what you do, some of you switching up what you do, some of you elevating your side hustle, a lot of you bringing a lot more of who you are into it, a lot more personal stuff, a lot more personal leonine power, okay? I like this for you, this is very exciting. Let's look at love life. So for your love life, we've got this moon card. Again, got Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio for some of you. Also feeling air sign, even though I don't have a single air sign card, I know. And we have something about, for some of you, being a bit fed up, being a bit in the kind of mystery part of a relationship, and that mystery, rather than being exciting, might just be annoying. It might be that you don't know, you have some doubt about how somebody feels, or you have doubt about how you feel about them. Ooh, okay, relationships, love. Ooh, hello, there's the air sign. Some of you, it is an air sign. I'm waggling my finger. Okay. Let's deal with that first. King of Swords, the ultimate in air signs when you're dealing with relationships. A few of you, have you noticed like this guy here, very relaxed and everything? Well, kind of relaxed in an uptight kind of a way, isn't he? With the ice and the mountains and everything like that. Notice behind him, there's these broken lines. And for me, these are like old school um, telephone lines and they're kind of severed. So when you get this card, for some of you, there may be a feeling of disquiet, dissatisfaction, because you haven't either heard from this person or had the communication you would want to make you feel warm and fuzzy inside like a Leo should, okay? Leos, particularly if you have Venus in Leo, and this is any sign with Venus in Leo, but also for Leos, you know, you need to feel appreciated as a Leo. You need to feel loved. It's something you do deliver to other people. You're good at that. Um, you leave them as in no doubt as to your warmth and feeling in your heart and you're ruled by the heart. But other people can be a bit more cold and a bit more detached. And I feel like for some of you, you've been experiencing a bit of an icy chill from your King of Swords. 
Now, King of Swords can vary from being a difficult dog to keep on the porch to being a bit of a narcissist on the other end of the scale. So it's up to you where you think this person falls on that side of things. But either way, there's some things here that haven't been said, that haven't been spoken. It's covered in birds and they're all messenger birds, but he's not saying anything. And he's kind of out on a limb. I'm getting like hermit vibes. Some of you might be dealing with a Virgo, um, but also lone wolf, you know, never mind difficult dog to keep on the porch difficult wolf to keep in the prairie. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Then we have the Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands is a card that comes in when the energy reaches its apex. It reaches its kind of maximum point. So for example, if you are feeling fed up, if you are feeling that you have explained yourself to this person or that you have shown love to this person, made them special, whatever it is. And maybe you haven't had it back in return or something has happened with this person or you just haven't, they're not replying, you know, or whatever it is. You may reach a point where that is too much for you and you do something about it, whatever that is. Ten of Wands is a surrender card. It becomes too painful to stay the same. You realize you don't like it, you don't want it, you don't want to be in that situation. And ultimately, it's a very cleansing card. And whenever you get the Ten of Wands, it's a challenge to you. It's a challenging card. And the one card that you'd be really hoping to get is the other card that you got. Okay. Ace of Wands. You can see the difference. So when you get the Ten of Wands, you need to pay attention. What are you sick of? What are you fed up with? What isn't working for you in whichever arena, arena of your life? And this can be work as well, whether it's, do I love this? Can I do this? Do I like working with these people? But in relationships, is this for me? Is it enough? Is it what I need? Can I offer X, Y, and Z back? Okay. And then when we get to this 10 of wands, you find that the one kind of collapses to the zero and you end up renewing with the one and the one is the ace. So that is like a new beginning. There will come, and I think it will be when we have a new moon in Pisces, which is the 20th of February, I think. Yes, it is. Just looking when the next full moon is for you. So we've got next full moon on the 7th of March, okay. New Moon in Pisces is because you've got the Moon card as well. Very transformational, very magical time for you, itchy nose. It feels like a lot of feeling can come to the surface from both you and this person if there is somebody else in your life at the moment. If you're single, you're going to find that if you don't want to be single, you will reach a point with the Ace of Wands where you can do something about it in quite a Leo way, okay? Let's have a look. I'm gonna take a couple more cards. What's the main challenge here? What's the main challenge with this situation? Ooh. Such a nice birdie on the roof. Don't know if you can hear it. Oh, this is nice. Okay, main challenge. Three of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles is finding out if you're on the same page. That's your main challenge with this person. You want to know if they're actually all in, whether you're on the same emotional page, whether you're kind of feeling it together or whether it's you doing all the work, you know, there's a feeling of this. 
We also get the magician. I like this for you. You have the ability, everything is you pushed out. And do look up Neville Goddard if you hadn't before, because it seems to be a bit of a thing for you. Um, the magician is when the fool gets the tools of magic and starts practicing. And also it's a number one, a bit like the Ace of Wands. The universe is pushing this power to you now, Leo. You're fixed fire and you're very capable of dealing with this because Leos are so nice. Leos are initiators and you've got that kind of grit to see things through and you have the fire in your belly. The universe is telling you that especially to do with um, work and creating business and anything to do with magic and making things happen, you're hot for that. You're in the driving seat. So you could also direct other people towards it. It can be a bit of an obstacle because we're looking at obstacles in love relationship here. Is that you've been feeling powerless and that's why that four of cups came up in the beginning because that is when you feel powerless so you kind of switch it off you just think oh god you know what fresh hell i don't seem to be able to do anything with this or about this it feels good though it feels you also get the nine of cups coming in look at that yellow energy this is where the universe is saying, tell me what you need, tell me what you want. Put it out there because I can deliver it, okay? Just wanna take a couple more cards on the King of Swords situation. Ooh, yes. Not surprised to see that one. Eight of Cups. For some of you, you may decide that you need to put distance between you and this situation or this person or this job or this relationship. Whichever it is, you're brave enough to do so if you need to, okay? And you know you are and you can feel it and you have the emotional conviction to move forward with it, okay? And for some of you, that doesn't mean 100% goodbye. It just means a distancing. And then you, oh, hello. Also get the three of wands. Such a Leo card. You have so much opportunity here for growth and for making something happen that actually, even if you need to cause a bit of distance, which maybe you've never done before with this person, if you just need to move to the side a little bit and see what happens when you're not putting the effort in, I think that would be a tremendous idea. In the extended reading, I'm going to look at the King of Swords. I'm going to look at everything as you pushed out in your relationship. I'm going to look at how they feel about you, what's going on with your person, and what's going on with that Eight of Cups. Is there a need to walk away? or can you stay where you are? Wisdom of the Oracle, you get deep knowing. And again, you've got the moon card. The moon is huge for you, literally, this month, okay? So look out, especially around the time of the fifth when you surely get some kind of revelation, definitely whether it comes directly from somebody or from, you know, a secret or something, or whether it's you actually actively looking for answers, you're going to get them, okay? Woof, Leo. I'm going to go do your extended reading. It's first link in the description box. Do like, share and subscribe. And yeah, let me know as well. Leave me a comment. Let me know how it resonates. And I'll see you soon. Namaste.